started recording the session. I think we can begin. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, to show up on a weekday evening to have this really interesting conversation with us. Uh, let me first share my screen and then we can get started. Before we begin, I just wanted to quickly go over a couple of um, housekeeping tips, uh, which is, you know, please do be mindful and keep yourself on mute at all times and switch off your camera so it does not interfere with the quality of the event. This event is being recorded and it will be shared uh, on our YouTube channel. So don't feel free to kind of sit back and enjoy the session. Uh, do drop your questions in the chat box and Ying will be answering them towards the end of the session. That's it from me. Take it away, Ying. Awesome. Thank you so much. So let me put it on full screen and then uh, you guys can tell me if you can see my screen. Fine. Yes, we can see you. Perfect. Awesome. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today uh, for this exciting topic, uh, landing your dream job. I changed the title slightly from 2021 to only 12 weeks. And I will show you how we can get our dream job in 12 weeks. So before we get started, I wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Ying Tao. I'm a proud woman in product. During the day, I'm the head of digital product at a top investment bank. I've spent my last 15 years on Wall Street and then navigating my career, right? Started from sales and trading, then uh, to business management, then three years ago, take on this new role for head of digital and really uh, focusing on investing and integrating technology and build products to transform uh, this large uh, organization. But six years ago, I got introduced into coaching. So I'm also a leadership and executive coach. And after I get access to coaching, right, from the techniques and you know, the methodology perspective, I find it not only helped my work in terms of building transformation in a large organization. It also helps me as a manager and also as a parent, as an individual, to help people around me with teams to really unleash their potentials and achieve their life and business goals. And that has been so fulfilling for me. And in addition to building products, I also serve as mentor for uh, Techstar and helping uh, startups and entrepreneurs, right, to get started on their businesses. So when I introduce myself to an audience like this, uh, there's a large number of keywords, but I will actually put it into a story. And it's actually a very painful story that I will share with all of you. So as you can tell, I grew up in China and I came to the States about 15 years ago and pursuing my master's degree at Yale University. At that time, I thought, oh my God, I have all it takes right, to start jumping into my career and et cetera. And I got hit so hard from the beginning. I remember when I was in company um, on campus recruiting, I don't even have a resume polished. And when I went to the career center, and you know, the teacher told me my resume is really not good. I remember that I was crying from you know out, out of the office and really fear like what I'm going to do, like when can I find my next job? Fast forward 15 years ago, 15 years later, I'm holding a really senior executive at a reputable investment bank. I'm getting paid pretty well. I have a sizable team and I see I'm making huge con contribution right to my company and the industry. But at the same time, I really don't feel fulfilled. I felt like I was throughout my career learned to always climb the corporate ladder, to always aim and chase for the next big thing. And for some reason, I felt like life and work are two separate things and I can't have both. And I have really struggled. Six years ago, 
I co-founded a company, right, which we uh, acquired, uh, we attract $300 million and it was really successful. But I was so scared to leave my salary job. I was like, what if this not going to kick off, right? What if, um, so there is a lot of what ifs in my head until recently that I really truly acknowledge my calling and then really see that you can really achieve the satisfaction that you always wanted in your life. So I'm eager to share with you all this journey and some of the tips and lessons learned that I have throughout this journey on how we can line our dream job in just 12 weeks. So with that, today we're going to talk about three quick things. So the first thing is, why is it so hard for most of us to land our dream jobs? And the second thing we'll talk about the seven shifts that you have to have to win this career game. And the third thing is about the ultimate career building roadmap. I know we're all product managers. We love roadmap. How we can use this roadmap to help you to land your dream job in just 12 weeks. And then we'll open up for Q&A. So before we get started, we have three quick polls that I'm going to launch on Zoom. So you can start voting now. So the first one is about what are you hoping to get out of today's session? The first one is you gain some self-awareness to see how you can do differently in the process of job hunting. The second one is to get some tangible tips on how we can apply in our upcoming job hunting journey. And the third one is to gain clarity in managing your career going forward. So if I end the poll and you can see we have 11 people voted and we see uh, there's 55% of you wanted to get some tangible tips, right? Which we're going to cover it off uh, in our presentation. And there are actually half of you wanting to gain some self-awareness and clarity, which um, we'll get through all of those. Just wanted to make sure that you get what you wanted um, now spending an hour with us today. So the second poll is about if we can reflect a little bit, what is one thing that gets in the way for you to achieve what you really want in life and your career? So I'm just going to read it out loud. The first one is, I don't really know what I want. And we'll talk a lot about this later on. Second one is, I don't think I can get what I want. And the third one is, I want a better life and a better job but I'm not so sure. Don't you need to sacrifice your life to move ahead in your career? And the last one is my boss is the problem. My company, my coworker, or even the economy or COVID is really what something get in the way for me to achieve what I wanted. So we have uh, 13 people voted. I think it's uh, representative. So I'm going to end the poll. Based on the results, we actually see this conflict between life and work is the fear of success is what if, what do I need to sacrifice in my life in order for me to move ahead in my career? And we see there are 15%, 30% and 15%, right? That really worried and concerned about, I don't know what I want or I don't truly believe I can get whatever I want. So the third one is, have you ever engaged with a career coach in the past? Either is no, I think I can manage this on my own or no, I don't think I can afford it. We'll try it when I get my next job or yes, but the coach told me just doesn't really work or yes, my coach is such a critical part of my success. 
So we'll give it a few seconds. So we'll end the poll. I love this. And then let me share the results with you all. So I actually see six people and more than 50% have worked with a career coach before, but they, felt, they find that the coach teaches them just doesn't seem to work. And then there are five people think I can't afford it. And we'll um, talk about all this. So back to the question, why is it so hard for not only you, but me that spend last 15 years and feel like we can't get what we wanted? So many of you has nailed it. The first one and the most important one is we don't really know what we really want. And you see that I emphasize the word really. And the reason is we always say what we don't want, or we say what we want, but is that really what you want? I remember there are years that I say to people that I just need to get that promotion. But at the same time, when I worked so hard and did get the promotion, I feel little joy and satisfaction. And then I started to question, do I really want that? And we also sometimes felt like I wanted to be a product manager. But then we realized that we don't really spend any time studying or we don't spend any time networking with people. And is that really what you want? And the problem with that is you can't hit a target if you don't know what the target is. So if you don't really spend the time, truly understand what you want and what you really want, for sure you won't be able to land your dream job because you don't know what the dream job is. So you may end up somewhere, but it definitely is not the destination that you want it to be. And the second biggest one is we don't believe we will get what we want. And that happened to me a lot. Even when, I, when my company attracted $300 million, I don't truly believe that we can go IPO. I don't truly believe that you know, we'll be successful. And then that makes me make the decision six years ago to stay with my corporate job because my, I get my green card, I get like a security for my families and et cetera. And most of the times when we grow up, right, we were learned from our parents firsthand, you don't get what you want. And even when we are adults and we are fully in charge of our own resources and destiny, we still don't believe we'll get what we want. And we'll talk about that in a minute. The third one is no surprise, is most of the times we're afraid of failure. What that means is when we are looking for jobs, right? We're like, we, we can think of 20 different reasons why we can't be successful. I have a friend, she worked in uh, financial services for the last 15 years. And she told me she wanted to be an interior designer. And I said, why don't you do it? She said, ah, I don't think I'll be successful. And that's usually the first thing that stopped right there from us really achieving what we desire and what we want in life. Similarly, we are also afraid of success. There are so many stories out there and tell us that if you are successful in your career, you have to sacrifice. I remember the years that I was with a group of very successful senior females and I was like, do I really want it to be like them? I see people have relationship issues. They don't have time with their children. And sometimes I tell myself, you know what? Family is important for me. Career, I can wait. But then you feel like you don't truly have that satisfaction because you feel like you really sacrifice your dream for the safety and security of your family. So the freedom of success is also very important and it's a huge factor that get in the way of our success. And number five, 
is we worry about money and security. We know that we don't like this job, but it's a paycheck. It has certainty. But when, and I, we were joking, uh, when you have a high paying job, sometimes it becomes a holden handcuff because you really can't and you're afraid of letting go of that constant paycheck, that security, that money, even though you know you suffer, even though you know you're not successful, and even though you know you, you don't have joy, satisfaction, and power, but you don't want to let go because you're afraid of the uncertainty that some other path will bring it for you. And for many of us, we also don't have time to even look for another job. We are so busy. We have children, we have constant priorities, we have work. We are worried about how our boss will look at us, how we are measured against our colleagues. It's always a competition. There's always non-stopping working. My husband used to joke, he's like, we rarely see you at work. Is this a hotel or not? I used to work 120 hours a week. Or even when COVID just started, I probably work 60 or 70 hour a week. It's just like a never stop. Until I realize I can work a few hours a day and I can still be respectful. I can still be respected. I can still be effective in my job and doing something else, which is enjoying our life and family. And number seven, is many of us learned to handle everything on our own. As women, we are trained to be multitasking. We have to be a parent, a mom, a wife, a cook, a driver, a piano teacher. You have to do everything on your own. But when you look like when you look around, look at your boss, your manager's managers, they most of the times have a much easier job because they have people around them that has expertise and support them. I think we get better, right? We have, we started to hire babysitters. We have people that support us. And then most importantly, we need to learn how to enroll the entire world to be on our team so we're never alone. Sometimes we feel really bad by asking help, not only from coach and professionals, but from people around us. I have a friend, she's very well connected, but she never asked her network for referrals, for job referrals. She feel really bad. She feel like, you know, she shouldn't bother her friends. And that's where we need to start to get support from everyone around us. The last or not least is most of the times we react to external circumstances. We think if my boss can change, if my coworker can change, my world is going to be awesome. But most of the times it's so hard for other people to change. And we are the one that has all the control of ourselves, of the environment. And magically, if any of you play tennis or ping pong or any of those type of games, you realize that when you play in a way, your opponents right, or the other player will play accordingly. But when you start to change, they are forced to change around you. And that is the secret sauce of how you change other people is by really changing how we operate to define our boundaries and parameters. And you will start to notice your boss, your coworker, and everyone around you will change. But that change start with ourselves. So we talked a lot about what's get in the way and what doesn't work, what prevents us from really having what we achieve and want in life. So how can we change all that? One of the quote that I like the most from Einstein is that we can't solve problems 
by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. And we usually refer that as out of the box thinking or reprogramming your thinking. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is because if we live in the worlds that I just described with all of these obstacles, there's no way we're going to win the career game because we created them in the first place. So for us to really see a different results, we need to do different things. We need to think differently and we need huge shift in mindset to really support us to see different results. So the first one is actually very interesting because most of the times when we had obstacles in life, we give it more meaning that it actually is. We think about us. When we look at, you know, we apply for a job and we didn't get it. Most of the times we're like, oh, is there something wrong with me? What can I do differently? So we always felt like we are the problem, but we are not the problem our thoughts are, how we think and how we interpret it, um, the situations and events happen around us is the problem. So be your own CEO is actually a really good image. When you think about people that are successful, either in life or in work, is they have this CEO mentality. Whether you work in a large organization, you get a paycheck, where you create your own firm. Every single minute, we are the owner of ourselves and we are the ultimate owner and responsibility holder to define our own success in life and in career. So we are, but when you truly operate as your own CEO, you look at things differently around you because if you are the CEO, you have to define the strategy you have to define the vision. You have to be able to create a culture in your firm, which is your mindset and your thoughts. So you can truly control your feelings and you can control your thoughts. So you can control your actions and you can control your destiny. And the second thing, which is really important is we talk a lot about this, right? And through the polling, many of you select this uh, option that we constantly think work and life are separate. And we think that they are trade-offs and we are thriving for work-life balance. But the problem with that is that work is part of life. Work is one of the eight areas that's important to us in life. We have self-development, health, wealth, finance, relationship, romantic relationship with your spouse, significant others, your parenting relationship, your family, your friends. So work is one part of that. And the reason it becomes so important is because work brings in money. And then we most of times associate with how successful we are in our career to our self-worth. If you're successful in your career, that means you're a successful person. But when you started to really integrate your work into your life, that's where you're going to have the harmony between your mind and your heart. So we can truly have it all. We can have a win-win situation. So we know what we're really getting our life goals met and not sacrificing career, and we get our career goals met, not sacrificing our lives. And the third thing is you start to get connected to your future. We always say you begin with the end in mind, and that is so true. When we plan our vacations, we know this to our heart. When you plan your vacation, 
What's the first thing come to your mind? It's not, oh, I will book a hotel, I will book the tickets, you know, I will figure out how to get there. The first thing that come to your mind when you plan your vacation is this vivid thing, an image that how happy you will be when you are either laying on the beach where you go to see some pyramids or you're going to visit New York City or whatsoever. Is that image of happiness of how you will be feeling when you are at that destination give you so much motivation and it's something make you look forward to. And that's how you make the decision on your vacation. But that is the same with life and career is you need to start to really create this very clear picture of what do I want in life and career. Forget about how to achieve it, just knowing you will achieve it. That's really important. And there is a simple rule for many of you who are looking for tips. There is a simple rule that you can use to really help you get connected to the future and stay grounded, which is the 10, 10, 10 rule. What that means is think about your vision, your life, your career, everything you want in life. Think about what you wanted to achieve in 10 years and what you wanted to achieve in 10 months and what you wanted to achieve in 10 weeks. And that helps you when you make any decisions to think about the short term, the medium term, the long term, and it bring it in as they're really happening. And the next most important thing, when we are thinking about career, most of the times is we wanted to move from A to B. Either is we wanted promotion, right? Either is we feel like the current position doesn't really give us what we wanted, but we don't want it to leave the organization. So it's like a promotion or a change of role, or it's a change of company or you know look for another job. Or maybe you decided to start your own company, one of the three. But whatever you wanted to do, you need time to do it. And most of the times we find we don't have time. And the reason we don't have time is if you can predict a success of a person, whether from life or career, you look at how they spend their time on a daily basis, how you spend your time and how you spend your money on a daily and weekly and monthly basis is the most re reliable predictor of your future success. Why? Because we say we want one thing, but we're doing And that's why you don't get the results you want here, you get the result here. If you say you want to find another job, but you spend most of your time doing your current job, of course you're not getting the job you wanted because you're not really intentionally putting where your time is, where your money is, where your mind is, where your focus is on the things that you truly want. So it's really important. And also one thing we notice is a lot of us felt like we are really busy. It is a fact that we are busy, which means we are doing things. But research has shown you only need five or three things that is the most in important factor that's going to make a huge impact to your results, which is the 80 and 20 rule, right? So 80% of your results come from the 20% of things you do. Everything else doesn't really matter. And if we zoom really in to look at how we spend our time, I can guarantee if you don't get what you want it, that means you don't spend your time on those 20% of things that really, really matters. So for those of you who are looking for tips, one of the most important tips is to really focus on spending time on high value tasks. What do we mean by that? Many of us spend a lot of time editing our resumes, cover letters, 
and all that. Does it help? Yes. But does it really help? No. The senior you go in the organization or in the industry, the less likely people will hire you based on your resume or cover letter. I really stopped investing my time and energy and money on those because it doesn't really matter. One thing that really struck me is, uh, so we hired a partner from Goldman to our company a couple of years ago, and I got to see his resume. He only had four lines. I'm a partner at Goldman. I'm a managing director at Goldman. I'm analyst at Goldman. And my education, that's it. Do you hire him? Yes. Why? because he brings value and he brings different things into the organization. So you don't hire people based on their resumes. So that's where you wanted to really differentiate. What are the high value tasks? Staying in front of key state, state, uh, decision makers, networking, find referrals, spend the time, truly understand what you want things that you really need to spend your time on. And if you're not spending time on those things, guaranteed you're not going to be successful in, uh, in achieving your goal. I would just put it that way. And the next thing which is really interesting is you will say, I tried, I wanted to control my time, but I don't know how, or I wanted to get in front of this you know, decision maker, but I just don't do it. And most of the times it's not because we don't want it, it's because we have so many fears. So understanding your fear and truly present with it and a half mechanism to help you control your own actions are the most important things. Many of you are parents, I assume, and you probably see a toddler crying in the car when you take them into grocery shopping and et cetera. When you say, hey, we need to get off and go to you know, shop ride or go to grocery shopping, but they were crying, they were so scared, they don't want it to go. What do you do? You don't leave them in the car, you carry them with you. And that is what we're going to do with fear. When we catch ourselves that we fear so much, you just pat yourself and say, Got it. I know those fears comes up, come with me. So you're not going to budge and let the fear stop you from really doing what you want. But the only way you know, and you have that drive and motivation to do that is you got connected to your future. As you know, I wanted to be at that beach. That matters to me so much. So I have the motivation and I'm self-motivated to move all the obstacles in my way and truly get the future that I wanted. And the next thing that we wanted to shift is how we communicate to people and we call it own the room. So you notice, right, when we have this presentation, how I communicate, you notice how your managers communicate to other people. You notice the CEO of any big firm, how they present. You notice the presidents of the United States, how they communicate. What if someone comes in and say, you know what, I want that job, um, but I'm not so sure. Um, I've done this and that, but I probably only did 30% uh, of what you required, you know, yeah, how does that tell your interviewer about you, about your commitment, about your drive, about your capabilities of really doing this challenging and this high paying job that you want? And sometimes we fall into the tracks, right? Many of us looking for tips or looking for things that can really you know, help us with public speaking or with, you know, how I can probably speak in a different tone. But you realize most of those things are temporary fix. We say you fake it until you make it.
but we, we realize that we usually don't make it. And the reason is we don't even believe we deserve this big job. I remember when I interviewed for a very high impact job and towards the end, when they asked me some very simple question, I was like, you know, I don't know. And I feel when I say, I don't know, rather than say, I don't know with confidence, I feel like I was guessing myself. I was like, oh my God, I might really be able to do this job. And ironically, what you say doesn't matter is how you, your unconscious, you know, body sense, um, gesture and something that gives it up. So you can't fool people when you truly don't believe you deserve. And we all have those, you know, experiences, right? When we go to our boss and we say, I really need that raise. You really should pay me more. If you say it like this, I guarantee you will not get the raise. Only when you truly believe you deserve it, you're worthy, that's how other people around you will respond to your request. Otherwise, they know you don't really mean it because you don't even believe yourself. And the last but not least is, as I said, get support everywhere. And the reason that is important is not because we are not capable of handling everything ourselves. It's because when you truly have this high paying job, has this high impact job, that's all it matters. The CEO of the firm can't really do anything by himself. He needs to have a, a group of people by him to help him make decisions make intelligent decisions, even though ultimately he's the one making those decisions. But he need experts, he need people to support. He need people he can delegate to, he can get supported, so he can free up the time to be with his family, to do other things, to promote the company. So if you don't get support, whether it's in life or it's at work or it's everywhere, you're not going to go very far because you only have 24 hours, seven days. But when you have support, you have leverage. You have more than 24 hours. You have more than seven days. You can achieve a lot of things in a very short period of time. I know I'm doing a lot of talking and I know it's hard in a Wednesday evening, but the good things is we have a really scientific proven process that can have, help everyone, anyone to achieve what they really wanted in their career and in life. So we call it is the ultimate career building roadmap. And the key are really two things. Any problems you have when it relates to career it can all sum to those two words, people and position. So all your career related issues are a misalignment for the people in the seat and the position that they're in. If you feel like you're not satisfied, you're not getting paid, that means you deliver more than what this position give it to you. If your boss feel like you're not competent or feel like your performance is not good, that means you deliver less than what the position required of you. It's that simple. And most of the times we don't look at it like that. We look at career as something to define our self-worth. Is the career equals my value? If I'm getting promoted, that meaning I'm good. If I'm not getting the promotion, that meaning I'm not successful. But when you started to look at your job, your career, whether it's your own company, whether it's a company that, you know, you, your position, simply from a people and position perspective, you can really detach from this judgment, from this judgment of yourself. 
So your goal becomes very clear is you wanting to find a position that match with the value and with whatever you care about as an individual. So you achieve this alignment of people and position. And that's what your dream job is all about. And your dream job is different than my dream job, is different than her dream job. Because you, me, and that person are all different. So that's the most fundamental theory about career success. And the reason we say it's 12 weeks, and I think uh, we got actually a question about this, how long is too long, right, in terms of job funding, is 12 weeks is not too short, it's not too long, is a right amount of time to give you time to really sink down with your heart and truly understand who you are, what you want, what you care about, what you're good at, what's your value to the world. But it also has some period, right? So you can stretch yourself, you can challenge yourself, you can take some relatively controlled risk, and then you can get to a place that's going to be a shift. It's not like a quick fix, just jumping ship from one to the other, and three years later, you have a similar problem. So that's where 12 weeks usually is a magical number that really helps you to have a proper good plan. So there are a few steps. The first thing, as I said, is future pacing. It's you really have to have a very clear picture about what you want and what your life is gonna be in the future. And I can't emphasize too much about the importance of this step. Many people don't do this because they are like, I just want a job. I just want to get paid. I just want to move out of my current position. But if you don't do this, it's great, but you will never really achieve your goal because you don't know what your goals are in terms of life goals. And you will not achieve that joy, power, and satisfaction that you truly want it. And with the future so specifically and vividly mapped, there is no uncertainty about what we want and the value we bring to the universe. And that makes things so easy. It's like, you know, we're product managers, we build products. If you don't know what your website should make people look like, what your app will make people feel, what the ultimate value it brings, whatever you build is not going to be successful, right? You may land somewhere, but you will never know you achieve your goal because the goal is not clear. And the second thing we talked a lot about it is about fear setting. Because when you have fears, you can't move far, far enough. You can't even dream big. So once we put the fear aside, think about the future, we wanted to have scientific proven base to really get the fear under control. So we understand what we are really feared of and we develop ways to overcome it. So we can be empowered and have the true self-esteem and self-confidence to say yes to the things we really want and to say no to the things we don't want. And the next one, as many of we know, is to formulate our plan. But the difference I'm going to show you is most of the times when we have our plan is from now move forward. As you're getting started, you feel like, oh my God, I don't know how to get there. There's so many circumstances and there's so many things getting in the way. So when we are talking about formulating plan, it's actually coming from a future place. It's assume that you can get what you want. What is the first milestone for you to get there? What is the second milestone for you to get there? So it's actually reverse planning. It's how you can start from the future and moving it backward. And then you will realize, similar to Sprint, right? So you wanted to know what is the project, what is the product goal, and you work it backwards. And then you focus on your first print and you only laser focus on that rather than getting distracted by so many other things. And the fourth one, which is more important, 
than we think is to actively or plan. I think a lot of people go through the first three and fails hardly on number four. And I, I always say this is we underestimate how much we can really achieve in life and in career. And we overestimate our ability to execute. We have a perfect plan, we just don't execute. So there is a really scientific proven way to zoom into the 12 week, focusing on daily actions. And also whether it's using your coach or using other people or using your support systems to hold you accountable. So there's zero chance that you are not going to fulfill your goals. And we know if we work harder, access more and eat less, we will lose weight. So it's the same thing. If you do these high value tasks, get in front of the right stakeholders, you know, talking to the people about your value, really honing in on the position you want, there is guarantee you will get there. And the last but not least, as many of the product manager knows this better, is how we can measure performance and handle the breakdowns. As we're moving along our, our plan, there's always surprising things comes in. There's always breakdowns. There's always things that don't work in there. And that's where you need to be laser focused and try to get them out of the way. So you can stay focused on your plan. And guess what happens after this? Is our goals achieved? Not only career goals, but also life goals. And I think go back to the earlier um, poll that many of you selected. When we say some of you may have hired a career coach in the past and we find that what they teach us don't seems to apply. And the reason is when I started becoming a coach, I realized the coaching industry is really weird, similar to the maybe the product industry where anyone can call them a coach. But in reality, you really see three different things or services that people provide. So the first one, which is easier to distinguish and many of us know is called therapist, right? It's like to help you, right? Really discover your inner self, to discover some of the traumas that you have and really bring you into a normal mental stage. Many of us don't really need therapists because we're not in the stage, but some of us may need, right? If you're in depression or have some uh, eating disorders, that's where therapists will help you the most. And many of the people that you know that say themselves are coaches are actually consultants. And when we say consultant, usually refer to the people who teach you how. For example, how to write your resume, how to write your cover letter, right? How to um, do certain things. And it's really helpful, right? Many of those are coaching to the presence, right? Meaning I have a problem I need to solve. What is your expertise? Teach me. But the reason most of those advice or suggestions don't land or even don't work is because it doesn't come from you. There's no, uh, and as parents, we know this, right? When you tell your kids and say, hey, you really need to brush your teeth every day. You need to do one, two, three, four. Guess what they will say? No, I don't want to do that because it doesn't come from me. And as human beings, we need autonomy and we need to know that we are capable of making the decision ourselves. So when you hire consultants, it helps. It really helps. I hire so uh, many different consultants but you need to realize that they help to a certain extent because the answer doesn't come from you and very likely you find it's helpful, but you're not going to do it. Or sometimes it's cookie cutters, right? You feel like the answers are largely or generally uh, applicable, but it doesn't help you in your particular situation. So when we are talking about coaching, it's really the ICF standards, which is International Coach Federation. Um, the coach is really a partner and it's equal partner in the process. 
So we always refer coaching and coach as a mirror. It's like the coach can reflect to you. What is your fear? What is your future? Can really work with you, get very specific onto the future. And then those words coming from your mouth, but being you know, activated by the coach. And when you really reflect on what you want and then get presented to the fear, that's where you feel you are empowered and also self-motivated to really do the next steps. And another act, um, action or function the coach really provides is the accountability piece, which is number four, is to hold you accountable and to really work with you to get you from point A to point B. So that's in a nutshell, like the difference between therapist, consultant, and coaching. And we know we have 10 more minutes left. So that's where I'm going to open up for Q&A. Thank you so much, Ying. That was incredible. I do have, I see a lot of questions here, but I have another question which came in from Instagram. So I'll start right there. How do, how do you fight the urge to settle for less during that time? I mean, we've all been there, right? Like where we feel like, okay, let's just take this job or let's just settle for this uh, because I don't feel like I'm going to get anything else. Yeah. So we always say this, right? Um, we live in a world of comfort. So he, as human being, we have a natural instinct to feel comfort and not feel stretched. So whenever we feel stretched, we have an urge to go back to the comfort zone. And I think to really help you or help all of us with the urge to settle is that you have to truly present to your future. You need to know what you truly want and then make that truly want so, I would say, loud in your head so you to settle, that's one. And the second thing is, there's techniques to help you manage your discomfort so you actually feel comfort. For example, right? if you truly wanted to go to say um, Virgin Island or the beach and you're like, should I go to the swimming pool? Right? One of the best thing you can do is just to get presented and ask yourself why this beach is so important to me. What am I going to give myself worth, right? And that as you're so connected to this goal, you're less likely to settle for the swimming pool. But also you may want it to um, really understand what is this urge, right? Because most of times when we urge to settle is we have a lot of fears about ourselves. Either is we don't truly believe we can achieve what we want or we feel we are not enough or we are not worthy. So a really good tips is to think about facts versus interpretation is when you look at everything that happened in your life, you notice what is your story? What is your interpretation? What is the meaning you attributed to that thing? So you realize it's not as bad as you may feel. So I think it's both right from the pulling from the push side, you can help to manage and make sure you do not settle. And I guess we have a question here from Jamie. Do you have any advice on how to move from a mid-level to a senior role? Yes. I think uh, there are two things, right? So the first one is senior role are less for sure as a matter of facts, but it's less for a reason. Because if we truly understand the corporate structure, right, why we need to have one CEO and then a few senior people and then more middle managers in the middle is actually designed for a reason, right? Because you need more people to do the work and then you actually naturally require less people to do the thinking. So if you truly wanted to get to a senior position, the things you really need to work on is on your thinking, is less so on your doing because there's not a single senior manager who are opening account for clients who are code coding to you know the very detailed level. They will they may do some coding if they wish, 
but they usually have team to support them. And the thinking, what I really mean, comes from a number of places, right? It's vision, it's strategic thinking, it's about how you are uh, building partnerships with different departments, how you're solving conflicts with different departments, right? How you can inspire other people to follow you and buy in into your idea. And the most easy place to practice all of those skills is to with ourselves. If you're not comfortable telling yourself to other people, how can people trust you to sell your company to other people? The senior you are, the more job you are going to do is to get connected to others. It's to tell about the vision. It's to tell about the story. That's the only job that CEO requires to do. So the best way to practice is to practice on your own. If you can form this strategic thinking about your own career, I think you are much closer to an actual senior position that you wanted to land. I love that. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, you're dropping a lot of gems here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another question, which is, I think, a really good one, especially now during the pandemic, I guess a lot of women have been impacted uh, by the COVID-19 crisis. And, you know, there's a question which came in, which is about, um, can you speak to finding a new role after a longer gap, especially in leadership? Yeah, meaning gap, meaning, uh, you know, leave the industry either because of children or decisions and etc. That's right. I think uh, I would say in two uh, in two parts, right? If your goal, true goal, is to work for someone, meaning as you go back to the workspace that you have a boss, right? And then you happen to have a couple years of gap. I think you need to understand them and understand yourself. When I say you understand them is, if you're in that position, when you have people interview for the job, what are you looking for and what are your biggest fears? If I'm a hiring manager, I see someone that either due to children or something has two years of gaps, my natural instinct is, does this person know what we're talking about? Or does this person fully committed? Because if the person left the workplace for two years, how do I know the person is going to be committed, committed going forward? Because as a hiring manager myself, I hired thousands of people into the organization. And that's the biggest fear because you spend so much time and effort hiring talents and you don't keep them, right? So how you are going to address that? I think you have to first ask yourself those two questions. Are you truly stay close to the industry? If you are, great. If you are not, what can you do from now towards the next that you can close the gap. The second question is, are you committed after taking two years gap? Why you wanted to go back to the workspace? You have to truly ask yourself, is that for money? Is that for the drive? Is that for you realize being a mom actually gave you a lot of skills and you wanted to use that skills to really make an impact to the workspace. You notice it carries different way for the different answers that I just gave. I want here for money. I want here for just going back to the workspace. Or I truly care about this and I wanted to make a difference. If you truly connect it to your heart, when you have those answers to yourself, the hiring managers will be connected and moved and they can see your intention and they can understand the you know the decision you are making and they will give you a chance and in the interest of time we'll ask one question and perhaps you can you can share also where if, uh, all our attendees can connect with you yeah the last question is uh would you mind going over a couple of more examples of high impact activities yeah yes I think we all know this, right? Is um, people hire people they like or people hire people they know. 
even like if you're looking for a content, you will ask people around you, hey, which kind of content you like the most? You're not going to go to Google and just search and find one, even though the one with five star review. Why? Because we are always risk or worse. We don't want it to find someone that turn out to be not good. And that's the same thing with hiring in corporations because hiring managers are so scared of hiring the wrong person. It has nothing to do with you. It's just they don't want you to find the right wrong person. So they need to know two things. They need to know that they feel comfortable with you or they can trust you or someone they know or they trust that trust or know you that carries a lot of weight. And two is they will ask you all sorts of questions to test if you can really do the job. And if there is one red flag, they will think their fears comes in, right? They will be like, oh my God, this is, even though in the end you can basically do any job, right? I can't see anyone can't do any job as long as you're giving the, the opportunities. So understand how the mind of a hiring manager works is so important because what it matters to you is that high impact and high value activities means how you can solve those two things, right? One is how you can be someone that he can trust. So you need to know if I wanted to go to say Google to be a product manager, I better know for myself, right? Not only just to get the job, but I better know what it's like to work there. So I need to know people who actually worked there. And if the people is a friend, if the people is acquaintance or it's great. So if you know people, you should call them. You should introduce yourself or you should let your friends, your friends, friends, your friends, friends introduce you. So you mute, make a personal connection. If you don't, you find ways to work with them. So even you and me, right? We, met each other, at, you know, you invited me to speak on a panel and we work together. When you work with someone, even in a very small project, you see how the person is. You can assess their personalities, you can assess their drive, you can assess their capabilities, and you have much more confidence to see this person operating in a similar role. So I would say from that perspective, right, networking, Networking doesn't mean you get to know as many people as possible. It's to network for the person who are in those roles that you want it. Get closer with them. Find opportunities to work with them in any capacity you can. Volunteer for a job. Volunteer to do something for people. And, you know, people will remember you and they will do you a favor when you wanted them the most and expected them the least. So, and another thing is um, if your future hiring manager's biggest fear is whether you can do the job or not, then you truly have to study the job. You need to know what it works, what it means to be a product manager at Google. What language do they use? What type of system do they use? The more you know about the job, the better you can demonstrate and say, I have everything you need. So I think those are everything around those two techniques or two areas will be considered as high impact actions that move you closer to the job. Sorry about that. My, my son, I think this is the other parts of like working from home. My toddler was trying to come into the room. But, um, well, Ying, thank you so much for this incredible session. Uh, it's been great to have you. I'd love to know, I mean, before you leave, I think everybody here would love to know how they can connect with you. Is it on LinkedIn or anywhere else? Yeah, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Shoot me a message. Um, I'm a good connector. we we'll help, help you expand your network as well. You can send me an email. Uh, and my email is simple. It's coachingwithying at gmail.com. Or I also included a calendar um, uh, Lee, uh, invite, right? So if you're interested in coaching, we have group sessions, right? For the 12 week uh, Kickstarter that I mentioned, uh, we also have one-on-ones. Uh, if you're interested in any form, right? You can always, um, you know, shoot a calendar invite and get connected that way. Awesome, thank you so much, Ying, and again, 
the session will be posted on YouTube and uh, we will be sending across all of the details uh, via email again, uh, along with Ying's LinkedIn, so you can connect with her directly. Uh, and I guess that's it for now. Thank you so much, Ying, and have a great night, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.